in this section we will talk about cost surfaces and their applications. First we need to define cumulative cost surface. Sometimes in literature you will find it called accumulated cost surface. It is a raster representation of cumulative cost of reaching the target point from any location in the given region and there can be one single target points or many of them. And to define cost surface, we need to define input cost map. An input cost map can be uniform, just single value, but it can be spatially variable. For example, we can define cost as a time estimated from inverse speed limit for driving or based on time to traverse a cell based on slope or vegetation density if we are talking about walking. So how does cost surface look like if the cost is uniform? So here is an example. If the cost is 1, what we get is a proximity surface. What we need to take into account is how this distance is computed. And as we have already talked about, a Euclidean distance around a given point will be defined by a circle. But because we are going cell by cell, we are using discrete direction that we are following. And the standard is eight directions. So we will be walking either in X direction or in Y direction or diag diagonally like this. And then the cost surface with uniform cost one will look like this. So you can clearly see the eight, uh, eight different sections that are generated by using these eight discrete directions. We can refine it, make it more accurate by using 16 directions. And that means that in addition to moving uh, in this eight direction, we can also move in between in this direction. So that would generate 16 directions. And then the, uh, the proximity uh, surface would look like this. Now, this is very simple. What happens if cost is spatially variable? We need to define it by cost, by cost map. And uh, a good example is cost surface derived as a minimum time that is needed to traverse a grid cell with resolution S. So the time is size of the cell or length of the cell divided by, for example, speed limit. If we say that the minimum time required would be driving, by, uh, driving at speed limit. And we can compute this map using map algebra. So this is how such map will look like. Our input is raster map of speed limits and we have already created it by converting the street map to raster and assigning the raster uh, values the, the speed limit value. And to achieve complete coverage, we assign those areas that are off-road, where there is no street, uh, a value of five miles per hour as a speed limit for walking or driving through, through this area that doesn't have any roads. And then we can convert this to time and we will get time in seconds that it takes to pass or traverse a 30 meter cell. And that will be from one second on the highway to 13 seconds uh, if we are walking or running. And then the cumulative cost surface is much more complex. And you can see how it will look like here. So here is our target point. And the, the hills here in this surface essentially represent the cost of getting to this point A from any of these points. 
and the higher the hill, the higher the cost and longer the time to get to the point A. Uh, what would be the application? For example, we can assume that at this point there was an accident and we need to dispatch help from fire stations. These blue points are actual existing fire stations. So we, first we need to identify which fire station is the closest, uh, but closest not in terms of, of Euclidean distance, but that has the shortest least cost path to get to this point A. And we will find that by overlaying these points over the cost surface and finding what is the cost of getting to the point at all of these different locations. So when we do this, we find that the lowest value is here, then the second lowest value is for this one, and so on. And using this cumulative cost surface, we can then find uh, not only those stations that are the closest, but also the least cost or fastest path from these fire stations to the target, target point. And in general, this least cost path essentially functions uh, in a similar way as flow routing. It follows the steepest slope, but instead of, use, of using real topography, we are using cost surface. Now, depending on algorithm that is used for finding this shortest path, uh, there may be issues with, with depressions or flats in cost surface. Then the directions used for creating the cumulative surface need to be saved as backlinks, and they need to be used uh, for least cost path a tracked path. So you are just tracking it using the same directions as were used for cumulative cost surface. So here is an example. So as I said, the least cost path is, uh, is traced along the gradient line. And if we need to track it back, we can use backlink. And here is an illustration of such a such situation. From this point, I have several options where, we, uh, where I can go. So 1.7 and the lowest, there is no lower point in this neighborhood than 1.7. So I can go this way or this way or this way. Only when looking farther, there is 1.6, I can find the right way. So, so that's why using backlink is, is useful. So this is how the shortest path uh, uh, or least cost path will look like. You can see that the Euclidean distance between the fire station and the accident follows this line, but of course we can't drive that way and the uh, and also the cost would be high because you have the you have only five miles per hour allowed here in many cells. So the fastest one is to get to the uh, get to the highway quickly and then follow the highway at the speed limit. Now a cost map can be even more complex or even more information can be added. Here is an example where we combine the elevation information and friction map based on land use to create a cost map for walking. So we are trying to optimize search for a lost person that was last seen in a given location. And we are trying to find out how far that person could have gone since it was last seen so that we can redirect the resources in those areas where that person might be. So that we don't go, for example, to search uh, into areas that that person couldn't even reach within that given time. And to create this map, uh, to create the map how far the person could have gone, uh, uh, we use the friction map. We use the friction map 
where the low friction is assigned to developed areas, streets and roads, where it is easy to move around. Then moderate friction is assigned to forest, that means where we have lots of vegetation, so you can't move as fast. And then we, uh, to exclude the lakes, uh, we assigned the boundaries extreme friction. So that would, uh, uh, that would create a barrier around lakes. So we assume that the person couldn't, uh, couldn't cross, the, uh, cross the lake. So, and this is the equation that is then used to compute the cost surface. And you can generate, this is an empirical equation. So for different situations, you can generate different equations. The cost of traversing each cell we take into account the size of the cell, so that means the distance to cross each cell, the difference in elevation, upslope, whether there is different moderate difference in elevation downslope, or steep difference in elevation downslope, and then friction term that represents the land cover. And the, each of these terms is weighted by a constant. So what you have here is that when you are going upslope and steep downslope, there is a weight that slows you down. If you are going moderately downslope, you can walk faster. So there would be a negative term that shortens the time. And then the cumulative cost surface will look like this. So this map shows the time it will take the walking person to get to each cell in this region. And then you can extract an isochrone and, that, and delineate the area where the person would be after a given time, let's say in our case, after one and, a, uh, one and a half hour. So you can see that along this road, the person can get pretty far away, but it doesn't make any sense to, uh, to go that far, for example, here, where we have a very dense forest, for example, and also some steep slopes. And with this, the, the resources to uh, to search this area can be optimized. Then in addition, all of these examples that we have mentioned so far really focused on uh, finding or defining cost surface for single target point. However, we can have entire set of ta target points and they can be organized in different ways. One, uh, one common application is multiple targets that define a road network. So that way you can create a proximity surface uh, from major roads. And of course that's important uh, for, uh, for location, for optimal location, for example, of businesses and things like that, even schools. So when the cost is uniform, then you just get distance from major roads that will look like this. So you see that it's a more complex surface than what we had for a single target point, but it's still fairly, fairly simple. But such case is still rather artificial. Uh, more realistic distance to the road would be based on the cost of passing each cell. And we already have created such a cost map and that was the time to traverse each cell. But now, instead of computing accumulated cost surface for a single point, we are computing accumulated cost surface for a line. That means for many, many points. So that would be for all these lines. So you can see that instead of having like one low spot, we now have this valley from which these distances are computed. And again, the higher the hills, the higher the cost. And you can see that there are areas like here, or even the Centennial Campus, 
that have relatively poor access to the highway, to the belt line, because there just aren't enough roads or aren't the roads in the right direction. And you can then solve uh, problems like you want to say, where are all the areas that are within the certain cost distance? Here I have it classified as class, uh, class three, and that depending on whether we, we are talking about cars or whether we are talking about walking, uh, that can be then translated into, uh, into time, into hours, or into some other, other measure.